Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and welcome to BMMP 2543 Material Selection. So today I'll be talking about processes and process selection primarily on shipping process. Okay, um, so we've gone through a lot of uh, talking about the uh, material index, uh, talking about uh, material selection process, uh, the design process in general. And so now we move on to the next step, which is the uh, shaping process. So um, the so not only uh, we need to identify uh, what the materials that we want, what kind of uh, the objectives, uh, we've already uh, started with uh, how we uh, translate those information right we determine the constraints we determine the objective and uh, what are the free variables so uh, those uh, process process and procedure that we've gone through is talking primarily on what are the uh, the design uh, what are the materials that we want to uh, decide on the end in, in the end but also we can also use those kind of uh, those steps actually to translate on what kind of process that we want to, we want to do Okay, so uh, the processes that that it involve uh, primarily uh, that, that 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 comes to uh, getting the final product. Okay, and it's not as, as simple as, uh, as choosing uh, what kind of uh, uh, the, the cheapest process or what are the the easiest process, but it's also taking into account all the requirements or the all the uh, design requirements that we that that we've already uh, put through. Okay. Okay, so uh, we begin. Um, so we started off with the selection of the material. Okay, here. We start off with the selection of materials. Okay, we uh, we've uh, translated the information that we want. Uh, we know the uh, the function. We identify the constraints. We identify the objectives. We identify the free variables. So now, how we going to go through uh, the the process of uh, determining what kind of uh, process that, that we need to to uh, to fabricate or to design our 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 product. So a process is a method of shaping, joining, and finishing a, a product. Okay, all the uh, you've uh, been uh, you've uh, taken the subject of manufacturing process, manufacturing practice. So you understand that uh, there's there's a lot of uh, process to shape, uh, join, and also to finish uh, 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 a design based on the design of a for the material. <clears throat> so processes, for example, like uh, casting. Uh, you're familiar uh, with uh, machining. So those are the traditional uh, processes that uh, that uh, you've been exposed to, and those this the, the selection of the process itself depends a, a lot on what kind of materials, what uh, function, and what uh, the objective that you, uh, the design requirement of the of the material itself. And before even we begin to select process, we actually need to first of all we have to uh, classify. Uh, what are the, what are the processes uh, under the uh, family tree? So you've seen here uh, the first one would be shipping. Okay, shipping here, and uh, excuse me, uh, and shipping uh, primarily taking from the raw materials. And then we ship it to the final, uh, uh, not the final dimension or sort of a, a rough dimension or the bulk dimension. Okay, we take in the ore of the material and then we uh, we process it to a, 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 a two different shapes that, that, that are later on be used to uh, other secondary processes. So we have uh, casting, okay, taking uh, uh, molten metal, uh, molding methods, uh, for example, injection, compression, and blow molding here, deformation methods, rolling. Forging and drawing, powder methods, primarily for ceramic materials or brittle materials, and we have special methods for like uh, rapid prototype, lay up, uh, electroform, for composites, or for special metals, uh, machining, uh, more or less, or for uh, trying to get the final shape. You can cut, turn, plane, drill, and also grind, and heat treatment. 
so uh, a lot of this process are actually just obvious uh, processes that you know that you're going to uh, get the final dimension or the final uh, shape of the of the product and so another uh, uh, like for heat treatment is sort of a not so obvious uh, process is that we want to design to get the desired strength uh, or the desired properties that we want you want to it, it be softer or harder or we want to make it uh, uh, smoother we want to have a, a, a harder surface okay and for joining primarily we want to join uh, two materials okay joining processes are process that we uh, assemble uh, from two different uh, parts of, uh, of to get to the final assembly design and it involves uh, for example adhesives could be flexible or rigid adhesives welding uh, using uh, between uh, metals uh, or even uh, non-ferrous metals uh, for fasteners for example like rivet bolts uh, stable or and sewing and finally for finishing is that we the process that we uh, go through to get the sur final sur finish, finish uh, to get the aesthetics uh, to make it presentable or marketable to the to the general general uh, general market and uh, finishing not only uh, uh, not mainly li limited to uh, uh, first is polishing uh, in electro polish or lab or burnish coating electro plate anodizing spray which uh, also with painting uh, not only to uh, get a more uh, uh, to improve the aesthetic but also actually to to, to serve a second uh, feature, uh, objective which is to uh, to protect the, the surface of the material from uh, for example corrosion or damage from the environment and then texture for for example raw laser uh, or electro text, uh, texture is that uh, it will be uh, for easier for the user to handle uh, for uh, uh, to uh, have a better uh, texture feel of the of, of the uh, of the material of the product. Okay, so uh, process uh, is a method of shaping, joining, and finishing of a material. So, so it is important that we uh, on the early stage we want to decide, uh, we understand all the information that we we, we have. And also, uh, so that we prevent uh, from having uh, to incur uh, later on a cost penalty. And we also need to understand that what kind of a material that we are going to deal with, or what are the shape that we want to uh, get in the end, how precise we want uh, its dimension, how much, uh, how much uh, uh, production that we want for every run or every batch of run. Okay, so uh, we've gone through. Uh, so from the our uh, understanding of the translation the information from the from the, that's given that's provided to us okay we know uh, the constraints we know the 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 objective and we know what are the few variables that, uh, that we have so we already decide so we know what the materials that we want and from there based on to get the shape of uh, for for shape itself we know from the design so do you know the this, uh, the designers given to us what are the uh, the dimensions what are are there any holes that will be in the product are there any uh, uh, it will be uh, how will be be assembled or is it will going to be uh, it's it just uh, uh, this the assemble uh, uh, process that we need to do what are the finishings that we need to do and we we'll, we need to know also uh, how precise okay we want to know also how precise we want. Okay, what's that, what are the tolerance that that that, that require for the for the, uh, based on the design? Okay, what are the general tolerance and how much uh, how much uh, how that we want to produce in every batch run? Okay, is it a one time uh, sort of a prototype <clears throat> or is it a, a, a about hundred uh, hundred pieces per batch and uh, how we want to do every if it's a component how how much uh, what are the components that needed? Do we need require mold? So these questions uh, we need to uh, have uh, upfront before we decide uh, what kind of uh, process. And uh, from the translation table, okay, we know the material, uh, the physical design based on the drawing. We also done the material selection with the material selection chart. Uh, we uh, got what are the budgets or uh, that uh, that we expect uh, to be. Uh, used uh, for all this so then we then only we can uh, select what other process that we 
have to uh, that we have to choose based on the classification of the process that we uh, seen earlier. Okay. So all this information are interrelated to each other. So you have to uh, understand uh, the information. Okay, early on. Okay, the function we need to understand the function of the material. So if if the material is expect to function uh, in a in a sort of a tension uh, uh, method or in a form of, for example, another function of compression method. So not all processes are uh, 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 that can meet that the, the, the requirement. For example, for uh, if you want to uh, make a rod, for a circular rod, so it's not it is uh, to do you it is not uh, economical to make a uh, to make a rod from casting. So, because uh, you casting, you have let's say a rod has to be a minimum dimension of uh, one meter, okay. Uh, and then you you can't make a, how you have to imagine how big the mold you need to uh, you need to prepare to, to to achieve that that shape and function, okay. So uh, I, I mean, so uh, other process are more suitable for it. Uh, a material if the material have uh, very high uh, melting temperature so casting is not it's not suitable okay you have to go to other methods uh, and then all this comes down to the, the process that, that we, we will choose based on the material shape size and the minimum section uh, the thickness and tolerance and rough the roughness minimum section batch size so all of these are interconnected okay uh, so if a, if a material uh, uh, if you go through, if, if that process, uh, if, if, if material needs to be, uh, uh, early on, we already decided that we want to do casting, for example. Okay. So, uh, we know that the, the material, uh, also needs to have some sort of, uh, uh, elasticity. Some, uh, it has to be uh, some uh, ductility needs to be in there. So if you only use uh, casting and then, uh, and then uh, cooling through quenching, so you introduce a lot of uh, internal stress on the product uh, on the on the material itself, and you have to go you have to uh, do heat treatment afterwards so to make it more uh, ductile. So uh, the decision it is not just uh, deciding on just only starting from the material, okay, and then you already know the function shape, and then finally you decide the process. No, it's a, all of these are interconnected to each other. The process relates to the what kind of materials that it can be uh, that can be uh, used. Of course, uh, for example, uh, powder methods are not suitable for uh, for uh, for uh, for example uh, composites. Okay. So, in the end, you uh, all these uh, criteria actually in uh, in the end is just uh, uh, related to each other. So the shape, uh, the process also. Uh, also determine what kind of shapes that it can be that can, can produce also what are the functions in the end that you 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 get and also what are the materials that you uh, that you can use in that process okay so now i'll be i'll go through uh, what are the uh, primary shaping process that are available okay you actually you've gone through manufacturing process you've gone through uh, manufacturing practice so sort of uh, you actually be you aware of all these uh, processes that you uh, that you've got account in your previous subject so what i'll go through is just i'm going through uh, uh, briefly okay uh, sort of a refresh of what other uh, shaping process that are more re uh, that more that uh, related to in the on our on the material perspective meaning that what kind of uh, materials that that, that uh, this process uh, can encounter and what are the drawbacks and and what are the uh, benefits of a uh, of this process okay so first off is casting okay so primary casting is actually for uh, metal so when you say casting uh, we know that in general people are referring to uh, casting of uh, cast of uh, metals although casting can be used for uh, ceramic materials but uh, the, it's a it's a it's sort of a, a, a different uh, uh, a different kind of process we call as uh, slip casting so uh, casting 
is uh, uh, the the most the, the easier one is uh, is, uh, is uh, sand casting. Okay, that you are already familiar with. So it's basically just uh, the name sand casting is that because the mold itself is made from uh, green sand. Okay, uh, prepared from green sand. So this is one of the earliest uh, process that, that that mankind or in civilization knows to do early on in the, in in, uh, in history. Okay. Uh, so making uh, the sand mold, okay, having liquid metal, and then pour it into a, a cavity of the of the mold, and then getting the the, the desired shape, okay. And uh, uh, another process, a more uh, a more complex process, is die casting, in that the the liquid metal is uh, forced under pressure into a metal mold. Okay, the mold is now made of metal instead of a uh, sand to get a better surface finish or better dimension as compared to uh, sand casting. Next is an investment casting is that the 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 mold is made from wax pattern. Okay, uh, and then uh, again the liquid metal is uh, is poured into the cavity to get the final shape. And finally, for uh, uh, is another process we call as low pressure casting. Which is uh, the dye is filled from the below, okay. So gas pressure and then heat and then the pressure pull uh, push the uh, the the liquid metal into the uh, the cavity uh, above the 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 uh, above the, the at the top of the mold, okay. Next is uh, molding, is that uh, molding is more towards uh, uh, polymer. Uh, polymeric materials or materials that are very ductile, okay, very elastic, okay. So uh, the first is injection molding, okay. You, you have uh, granular shaped uh, polymers, and then uh, heated, uh, and then at the same time heated to pressure, and then compressed and pushed into a cavity to uh, into a into a mold cavity, okay. This process really you can have uh, a lot of uh, it's very fast to get. And a lot of uh, at, uh, a lot of product at the at the uh, one batch run. Another one is uh, blow molding. Okay, you have uh, we have the uh, blow molding and injection molding machine at our lab. Okay, the blow molding is basically you you with gas pressure you uh, expand the the material polymeric uh, materials to fill the the uh, gas of the mold, uh, uh, fill the, the wall of the mold. And that takes the final shape. And next is polymer extrusion to we shape uh, a polymer, uh, to, uh, let's, uh, let's say a granular, granular polymer. Uh, so instead of injection to, to a mold, so we just uh, extrude it to get the final product, uh, more continuous uh, product. And finally is thermoforming, which is just the uh, the 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 sh uh, primarily shade uh, sheet sorry sheet of uh, of uh, polymeric materials, and then we apply uh, heat uh, uh, pushing uh, through the walls of the of our mold to get the uh, final shape. Okay, you can either use uh, vacuum forming using vacuum to push the material down to the to the uh, shape of the mold, or uh, drip which is uh, like a plunger or a pressure applied to get the desired shape. Next is a uh, deformation method is that we uh, first is uh, forging. So we uh, forced uh, uh, from a, an upper die okay, uh, to a lower die and we force the material to get the, the final shape. And then forging normally at a very high temperature, uh, we call it at the, uh, above the recrystallization temperature uh, uh, so that the material are softer to, for it to be easier to, to be shaped. Next is rolling. Okay, rolling. Uh, so we introduced uh, a material and then we compress it to get the to get the uh, uh, the, the dimension, the final dimension. So rolling either coming, uh, we want to get the desired shape from a larger, a bulkier shape to a smaller uh, desired shape that we want. Then and for extrusion also is the same principle as uh, as uh, as rolling is that we forced uh, through a die aperture. Uh, and have to have a more continuous, uh, uh, like a prismatic shape. And finally, for spinning, is that we we spin the, the ductile matter into shape, okay, and then we uh, you we machine it, okay, to until it's uh, it's desired uh, uh, surface finish that we want, okay. Uh, same, uh, it's the same as a process also called as turning, 
Okay, so we turn the 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 workpiece and uh, we cut it according to our final dimension. Next is a uh, powder processing and powder processing, as I mentioned earlier, primarily for uh, brittle materials uh, that are not uh, able to be used for uh, and not able to undergo process such as uh, a deformation method or casting method. Okay, that are more suitable with uh, for ceramic materials or brittle materials because. Uh, all those uh, deformation uh, and also uh, molding, casting deal with materials that have uh, 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 a very high ductility. Okay, so materials materials are more brittle, cannot undergo those heat changes. So it's better to uh, to form in a powder uh, method. Okay, so uh, the first is uh, as uh, dye pressing and sintering, which is the powder here. Is compacted in a die and uh, often we include with a binder so then we get the final and then we sinter cure it sintering is actually uh, we cure it in the oven okay to to or a furnace and then we uh, to get the final uh, strength <clears throat> next is a uh, hot isostatic pressing which is we introduce uh, pressure temperature and also time to uh, uh, compress it Okay, to press the material into the uh, into the desired shape. Okay, uh, using a pressure vessel, uh, for example, an autoclave. Next is uh, powder injection molding. Okay, and, uh, uh, powder uh, injection molding, but for brittle materials such as uh, powder. Okay, so then we uh, uh, it's the same as the injection molding as uh, as uh, uh, for plastic. It's just that in the in this that we we uh, specifically use for for brittle materials that in, in powder form not in the granular form okay so we pushed it into a, a mold okay and then from that we, uh, the material takes into the shape of the mold and then we take it out and then uh center inside the uh, a furnace and then finally as i uh, i said about uh, slip casting is that we the 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 material powder is uh is uh, we put in 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 water and uh, make it a liquid base and then we put into a porous mold and the, the mold will drain out the the water and uh, finally after we can take out the the shape of the of the material of the product and uh, cure it in a in a furnace and for composite okay uh, we have a filament winding which is primarily to uh, to get uh, a more circular shape of a product okay it's just that the fibers are, are woven, wounded into a, a mandrel rotating mandrel and with the resin uh, impregnated straight away into the uh, into the fiber next is a uh, roll and spray layup uh, in in that the material we place onto the wall of the mold and then we just roll and let it uh, uh with and then uh, brush it with resin also either we can also uh, just place the fiber uh on the mold wall of the mold and then we can uh, just spray resin on top of the uh, of the fibers itself next is a uh, vacuum and pressure back molding uh, same principle as the uh, roll and spray layup yeah, the difference is that we uh, the the fiber we've already impregnated early on Okay, and then we uh, apply, uh, we can just uh, either use a vacuum to apply a more consistent uh, uh, force uh, all along the surface of the, of the material or we can uh, have a vacuum bag and also pressure using a pressure, uh, applying pressure to the, so that we have a more uniform, uh, 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 uniform uh, force uh, pressure applied on the surface of the material. And lastly is uh, protrusion. It's just that the fibers are fed okay, through a resin bath here. The fibers are fed to resin bath to uh, make a continuous uh, shape form of the reinforcement. Okay, so uh, more continuous. So, uh, so most like the roll and spray lay up and uh, filament winding and vacuum and pressure back molding are uh, discrete processes mean that you get a discrete you have uh, individual parts of components of the product but for protrusion if you want to get a more continuous uh, materials of the product uh, next for rapid prototyping uh, we 
uh, first is uh, to deposition modeling so we add the solid body is created by the layers of layer deposition of the polymer droplets to get the final workpiece final product and then next is stereolithography uh, we use a uh, uh, light okay to create a uh, layer by layer, layer induction of uh, polymerization of the material okay and then next is direct mold modeling which is the sand mold is built up layer by layer by selective spraying of a binder so we this is for example the spring head uh, they can uh, spray layer by layer of different uh, uh, different uh, materials on the onto the uh, surface to build up the 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 uh, the, the workpiece and then finally is for laminated object manufacture is that the solid body is created from layers of paper and then cut with a scanning laser okay so we the workpiece is being then we uh, then the laser just cut and then add it to uh, to the uh, to the workpiece okay to get the final shape of the product and for machining okay also uh, one of the sub of uh, deformation is that we uh, for turning uh, first is turning and milling okay so turning is that the workpiece is turned and a tool cut into the desired shape uh, milling is that the tool is rotated and then the workpiece is fixed so we and then cut uh, to get the final dimension uh, drawing blanking bend, embedding and stretching is that we uh, a sheet of the material is uh, for bending we we bend it uh, to a desired shape uh, blanking is that we remove a part of the of the shape uh, and then also uh, bend uh, to get an angle bending uh, and then stretching to uh, to uh, to deform the the uh, the workpiece uh, electro discharge machining is that we using a graphite electrode and the workpiece is submerged in a dielectric material such as uh, paraffin and so we remove uh, uh, part of the workpiece to get the uh, part of the material to get the final workpiece and for water jet cutting uh, we using a uh, water to uh, and also uh, combined with abrasive material to cut through the uh, to the uh, to the to the material uh, and uh, the advantage of uh, water jet is that we often we don't uh, introduce uh, heat uh, such as for turning uh, or drinking blanking and also discharge machining so it's a uh, more uh, suitable for uh, materials that are sensitive to uh, heat or that are not proper when we use uh, not uh, not uh, that is not uh, suitable for using that involve heat that we want to uh, save from the uh, from any uh, uh, microstructure changes for metal or the material is not suitable to cut using uh, using traditional turning and milling okay we can use uh, water jet cutting so next i'll be talking about what the the uh, benefits and the drawbacks of all these uh, processes okay so for first off is casting okay so as you know casting uh, is, is cheap and it's a process at normal atmospheric uh, uh, situate uh, environment but the the drawback is that it has a it's a one-off process okay it's not a sort of a continuous so you often times you have to consider how much batch that you want to produce in each run okay and the flow of the metal also we have to we have to consider that we can affect the uh, the, the 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 strength of the material uh, die casting uh, uh, a large batch we can uh, a more rapid production product, uh, production rate the mold can be reused it has a high, uh, better precision and smoother surface uh, but the metal die and equipment are very expensive okay and it's limited to very high purity metal and the parts produced uh, often have uh, towards requires hardening okay and investment casting the the uh, the benefit is that we can have a uh, more complex shape uh, very high precision smooth surface uh, and then with no parting line but the drawback is that the process is expensive and it requires very long production times uh, compared to other casting methods for low pressure casting Okay, we can avoid uh, the voids and we have good surface finish, high precision, high production rate, but the tooling cost is very high. Uh, the mold life have, uh, the, it has a shorter mold life and limited to only low uh, melting metals. For injection molding, you can, uh, the, process, the production process is very fast. You can have uh, a flexibility in the material 
and colors uh, low labor cost because it's very uh, very fast production rate uh, design flexibility depending on the mold it's shape of the mold you can have different uh, shapes of the, pro of, the pro of the parts of products very low waste um, but uh, the the drawback is that a uh, very high initiating cost meaning that the the mold itself is you have to uh, uh, fabricate you know, to make the mold every time you have different design and part design restriction so uh, not uh, there is some limitation of the design of the parts if you want to make hold or anything so it's it's very it, so you have to, a lot of consideration uh, to be uh, to be taken into and and uh, have it will be difficult to have uh, accurate costing because it is, it is a fast process so we actually uh, uh, I mean people uh, often say that it's a very cheap uh, product but it's actually very high capital uh, and that you have to invest in, in the mold in the machine everything and blow molding again uh, rapid production rate you can have uh, you can make it very uh, fast production rate uh, less expensive than injection molding because the mold is more uh, more uh, the design of the mold is much simpler uh, it has a uh, multiple processing methods okay and uh, a variety of products can be uh, can, they can produce um, but it's limited to hollow forms of course uh, harder to control the wall thickness uh, very high scrap rate you have to remove uh, uh, the materials that you don't want and then uh, if it's the 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 thickness of the material is not up to the, the design then they, you have to scrap the material to make new again and you have to trim the excessive uh, excessive excess material for volume extrusion you can have a continuous production uh, very high production volume efficient melting and yeah, you can mix with uh, different materials and it's low cost but the thing is that limited complexity you only have the uh, certain shapes that you can only uh, do in polymer extrusion uh, mainly uniform shape you can have you can have uh, a complex shape it's, it's very limited uh, and also uniform cross, cross section only meaning the shape that is uniform only that you can uh, that you can produce and uh, is size variances mean that is uh, the, the, the the different the if something wrong with the processing parameters you can affect the 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 size of the product coming out and uh, thermal forming Okay, high speed manufacturing you can be molded into large size a wide variety of product and have low to equipment cost but the 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 drawback is that it has large waste scrap uses high quality plastic because you have make you have to make uh, you have to make it in sheet form and complex shape uh, produces internal stress I mean that because of the very thin material it can, can introduce internal stress on the uh, on the material itself next for deformation method uh, forging uh, the parts produced are stronger than casted or machine parts and the increased hardness makes uh, machine process uh, harder uh, the, the drawback uh, high cost of machinery die tools and labor uh, and also uh, afterwards it requires secondary shaping mean that uh, you only get the primary shape afterwards you have to uh, after probably machine it to get to the final dimension and rolling we have two types of uh, rolling met uh, method one is cold meaning that low below the recrystallization temperature so at cold rolling, the process is fast, high efficiency, uh, and that it improves yield strength due to the large plastic deformation. But the the drawback is that it introduces residual stress at the uh, cross section area, and has poor torsional performance. But uh, hot rolling, uh, the benefit is that you can eliminate defects. Okay, and also it can improve mechanical process because you increases uh, you process it at the at the above the recrystallization temperature. And it also the drawback is that it, you you have uh, it, uh, residual stress introduced uh, because uh, if you don't cool the material uh, uh, evenly, and also we can have non-metallic inclusion because uh, materials because the the metal for example uh, at that uh, high temperature, so other uh, non-metallic uh, atoms can easily diffuse and affect the properties of the strength of the of the material next is extrusion also uh, you can have cold extrusion or hot extrusion so for cold extrusion the benefit is that it has higher production rate it does not require heat uh, no oxidation on the surface and greater geometrical accuracy but the benefit is that it's limited by the workpiece material amount and restricted to ductile metals for brittle metals are difficult to hold rolling and this process due to a single production for every cycle okay 
and uh, because it, it, you have to uh, uh, extrusion is uh, limited with the with the with only that time matter so you you can't make it a, a continuous process for hot extrusion uh, it, it can uh, the benefit is that it can improve mechanical properties and the forming become easier uh, but uh, the drawback is that it's uh, limited by the workpiece material amount and also it's a discrete process with single production for every cycle uh, the impurities can be uh, can be spread uh, uh, uniformly across the across the material and it can affect the the structure and the strength of the material properties of the material you introduce oxidation because of the high temperature and you can also increase the dye wear and decrease the tolerance um, for spinning okay so you can improve, uh, perform uh, several operations okay and the forming parameter and part geometry can be altered quickly with less cost and then uh, if the product has defects such as crack and dent it must be scrapped okay this is the, the drawback next for powder processing okay uh, the the benefit is that it has close tolerance control low manufacturing costs a wider range of materials that you can uh, uh, you can process uh, it's reduced secondary uh, required secondary machining afterward the the drawback is that is the component size is limited by the press tonnage and compaction stage and you can have residual porosity porosity on the material on the green compact that can affect the mechanical properties uh, that can affect the strength the uh, the ductility of the material uh, of the powders so uh, it, uh, more become becoming more brittle for example for hot isostatic pressing uh, the benefit is that you can improve mechanical and physical properties uh, you have full density of the material and can have uh, a near net shape so you don't have to go to secondary machining or process to get the, the final shape <clears throat> and cycle times can be slow and then we can you're only limited to small production quantity meaning that it's based on the how big your 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 equipment or your your friend uh, your autoclave you, you want to cure uh, in center so uh, very small production quantity uh, that you can manufacture for powder injection molding you can produce uh, intricate and complex shape has good surface finish very high precision you can get high density and strength uh, but the drawback is that some materials require binder so and they can have limited homogeneity for the multi for different multi component powders and also it's just uh, uh, oftentimes you can get agglomerated powders which can affect the final uh, shape of the product can affect the final uh, uh, pro uh, mechanical properties of the product for slip casting you can get a good surface quality dimension stability density and uniformity uh, it's an economic for short production runs okay it's a simple uh, getting the uh, making the slip casting making the slip casting mode and then uh, to get the product is uh, short uh, very economical it has uh, you don't have to invest very high capital and uh, uh, the drawback is that it has low precision compared to pressing and powder center molding the production rate is lower compared to other process and differential shrinkage uh, during water removal okay you can uh, uh, you have to take into account it, the, the shrinkage factor and then the mold has a, a very low toughness next is a composite method we have filament winding okay it can be highly repetitive and accurate fiber placement able to produce composite with high fiber volume it's a lower cost for large number of components but the drawback is that it can need to have a mandrel uh, it's difficult to winding reverse curvature and poor external surface finish because the mat only the, the the internal surface is smoother because of its uh, the way uh, the way the process is is is, is conducted and roll and spread it up uh, the benefit is that you have economical process utilize low or toss uh, low cost tooling and material system suitable for small and medium volume parts but it's not suitable for uh, high structure requirements uh, it's difficult to control fiber volume fraction and thickness uh, because of this open mold you have the uh, volatile organic compounds being spread about so you have to in the, the, the area must be very large it cannot be in a closed uh, uh, enclosure closed area okay it will affect the 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 health of the operator and it's uh, low precision uh, very less uh, less precise and uh, for vacuum and pressure back molding you can have high fiber volume fractions okay you can uh, you can uh, control how much uh, resin uh, with uh, resin to fiber ratio and high, better fiber wet out uh, more uniform uh, fiber uh, fiber uh, uh, wet out uh, i mean 
uh, with the resin, okay, being uh, being wet with the resin. Volta organic compound is contained, okay, it's only inside the mold, and you can have better improvement in the process because of the uniform uh, pressure, uniform uh, load uh, force being applied on the on the material. And the drawback is that it requires high labor skills, low production rate, okay, and high cost. And you also need vacuum tight condition, meaning that the, you have to have a, uh, you have to have a, a compressor to uh, to to get the, to uh, vacuum uh, vacuum requirement. And then uh, for protrusion, you, uh, uh, the benefit is that it's low process waste and able to use a variety of reinforcement type, and you can fabricate large parts. The drawback is that uh, the cross section must be uniform. And the quick curing resin system, resin systems have lower mechanical properties, and it's difficult to maintain tight tolerance. And and then for rapid prototype, you can uh, the the, the uh, you can have uh, for deposition modeling uh, very high accuracy, uh, is also ch uh, cheap, easy to use, and automatic scaling. Uh, drawback is that limited material, uh, limited size, initial cost is high. Uh, for stereo lithography, it has wide variety of shape. It produces functional parts in a very short amount of time. Uh, drawback is that it, it can be expensive with the photo curable resin and limited size depending on the size of and the quality of the machine. For direct modeling, it can have very high accuracy, cheaper uh, compared to stereo lithography, and it's easier to use. Uh, the drawback is that it is very limited in size, initial cost is very high. And finally, for laminated object manufacturing, so components do not meet support structure, uh, and then it's very high manufacturing speed, but poor surface finish and difficult to produce the hollow parts. Next for machining, okay, for turning and milling, the benefit is that all uh, materials are compatible with the turning and milling general. Uh, you can have very good tolerances and short lead times. Okay, the 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 drawback is that you can have limited shape complexity, high equipment cost, a significant tool wear, and large amount of scraps that you have to deal afterwards. Uh, for drawing and blanking, bending and stretching, uh, the benefit is that it's easier to perform, a simple low cost tooling, uh, fairly precise and high production rate. And drawback is that there is limited in shape and some materials are difficult to use. Uh, for electro discharge machining. Uh, the benefit is that you can able to cut complex shape, have good surface finish, very fine holes that can be drilled and able, able to cut extremely hard material at very close tolerance. The drawback is that it has low material removal, potential fire hazard if the dielectric is a combustible or like paraffin, and it consumes time and cost and higher power consumption. For water jacketing, it can able to cut any kind of material. Okay, any kind of material can go to uh, uh, that can be cut through water, even uh, stone. Uh, so no superheating side and no hazardous waste and dust, uh, but it's lower than plasma casting, uh, higher initial cost and cannot cut thick, thick wood piece. So uh, that's all for uh, today's uh, uh, lecture. Okay, so uh, so you can uh, actually read up uh, all of this uh, information uh, uh, even in the textbook also and other references. So. Uh, uh so thank you very much for your attention today and uh yeah, i'll uh, we'll talk about next with uh, regarding uh, joining and also for uh, surface finish so thank you very much and have a good day